we simply cannot tow the idea of let's go and mine, let's go and mine. How much have we gained from our gold resources? Any resources that Ghana has ever had? Absolutely zero. We're here at Ange Hill Hotel, where a number of non-governmental organizations, environmental activists, have met to discuss the possibilities of a green economy as far as um, Atiwa Forest is concerned. This is to pit the idea of a green economy against the current government strategy of mining bauxite for an integrated aluminum industry. So we're going to be talking to some of the uh, stakeholders who took part in this, in this workshop. Yes, yeah, so um, this meeting actually is a validation and stakeholder consultation meeting. Um, the EU in Ghana contracted um, consultants to look into developing viable green development pathways for Atiwa, uh, the Atiwa range. And so the consultants presented their shortlist of viable options and we, we deliberated over it and we agreed on which ones are viable and within the short to medium term and then the long term. Give me the five best options in terms of green economy for the forest. In general, there, there are lots of them, but for the Atiwa landscape, um, we're looking at ecotourism as one with the most potential um, in that there are certain qualities that Atiwa has that puts it in a, a certain level of, 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 of um, quality level that others don't have, not even Kakum can, can have that. Um, we're also looking at payment for environmental services and ecosystem services that um, um, the Atiwa range has um, a lot of forest and if we need to protect those forests and people should be willing to pay for those um, um, forests that we are protecting, the carbon that is being stored in there, people should be willing to, to, to pay for it. And then we also discussed, and I think one of the very viable ones is a, a landscape level um, um, climate program, climate change program, basically looking at how do you quantify and commodify carbon within the Atiwa landscape and how does it benefit the communities in there. So those are some of the options. We also looked at a couple of them. So the greenhouse agricultural development option where we, we, we want to empower and, and educate um, farmers and non-farmers to pick up the concept of greenhouse um, development. Um, we are realizing that the weather is not the best of our friends now, but when you begin to culture certain crops within a greenhouse and framework, that is, has a, a lot of potential. And then also developing high value agro-commodity products within the landscape. For example, avocado, um, cocoa, they have a lot of potential there. So how do we ensure that the youth are interested in it? How do we develop that supply chain and value chain of these commodities within that landscape? So these are some of them. There were about eight or nine of them. And these are the five that we discussed that we feel has a lot of potential.